Managing multiple projects and tasks at the same time can be difficult, but SmartSuite makes it easy to track and visualize a lot of different data. From due dates, budgets, and time tracking, to viewing data and timelines, grids, calendars, and their newest view type, Gantt charts. Project management is a whole lot easier in SmartSuite. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our website, interdevsolutions.com, or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. To get started with SmartSuite, you will need an account. If you do not have an account already, there is a link in the description below. Once you're signed in, go ahead, create a project from scratch. There is some project management templates already within SmartSuite that are available. So if you go to the templates section, you can get started there to start playing around with data. We're going to create a projects table and a task table. Projects table going to be simple. It's going to contain your project name, the stage that it's currently in. We can assign a project manager if you want. We will roll up the build hours and we'll assign the due dates. Again, the only thing that's really required here is to bring in the project name because most of what we do is going to exist within the task table. So in the projects table, we have a project name that is just a manual input uh, text field. We have a status field. Then I have an assigned to field and I've labeled it project manager. This build hours is a formula. It's using the sum. It's looking at the project tasks and we're going to bring in the time tracking log. We're dividing it by 3,600 so that it gives us the amount of hours. And then I've also assigned a due date field with a start and finish date here. But again, the main thing here is just to bring in the project name. I have it labeled as website redesign. Most of what we're going to do is going to exist within this task table. And the task table is actually fairly simple as well. Realistically, you're going to have a lot more data that needs to get tracked at the project level, and there's a good chance that you're going to track more data at the task level. These are the core components that are required to be able to track tasks, projects, and view them in things like a Gantt chart, timeline, calendar, and so on. So what we've done here is I've already added a number of tasks that are related to this specific project. Way that I like to group things is this task by project. So I just go into the group here and I group my project so that I can see this website redesign and where it says here, website redesign. So I'm just grouping by the project. And then all of these tasks here are assigned to that specific project. And then we have a status field, with different values, planned and process, ready for review, block, complete on hold, whatever works for you, you can enter. I've got a couple of different types here. I have a task and a milestone. So a task usually takes place, I guess it could take place on just one specific day. If it's a shorter task, the task usually takes place from a start to an end date. A milestone is kind of like a checkpoint that we're looking at, and that needs to only have one date associated to it. And I will show you why once we build out the Gantt chart. I've assigned an owner to these tasks. It's only me for the time being. And then we've got due date. So this is where we can add our start and end date per task. Then we have a dependency field. But to add that, you just go in to add new field, type in dependency, and then select it. And you can add that field type. So the way that that's set up, it's going to be based off of the due date here. There's a couple of options. We've got auto scheduling, so it will automatically schedule tasks based on their dependencies. So if I change a task start date on my first task, the rest of them will move out accordingly based off of what I already have entered here. There's auto scheduling as well, apply backwards scheduling. Well, this is where if we have a project due date, and this is where we need to go live with something, then we can click this apply backwards scheduling and we can start from the due date and work backwards. But for this demo, I am just going to work from the start date and then we'll eventually find our end date. And then there's this dependency mode here. There's a standard and advanced mode. The advanced mode is a little bit more comprehensive, but most people will be able to start with the standard mode and it will work just fine. 
So once you have that set up, we can click into the predecessor and successor. So I'll expand this record. And this is the very first task, but you can see that there is no predecessor, which makes sense because this is the start point. So I'll expand this. We can see that there's a successor here, which is the second option, create new plan. We're just moving down in order. This is an order of due date. Essentially, we have the start and the end date all the way across. So we've got the predecessor and successors here. We can track our time on these specific tasks. Smart Suite does have a really nice time tracking feature. I just go in, click play, and it will start counting the time on that specific task. And that's where you saw the build hours formula summarize all of that data. Something else that's really cool about this dependency field, and it actually applies to the due date field as well. If we go into this fields to display, and I see this little plus icon by dependency, I can actually bring in, in different fields, the predecessor and successor fields so that we can drill into this data a little further. And then that way we can see on the specific task, what's to follow. And on the next task, you can see what the dependency is and then what the next successor is. So that's another way to visualize the data. And then you can click into it to view the information at a deeper level. Due date has the same option. You click the plus and we can see the start and the end date here as well. If you want to separate those out, I am just going to leave it as is and just remove those from the display for the time being. So to build the Gantt view, I already have it set up. I'll click into it here. And this is a Gantt view. So you kind of have your grid type view here that we're familiar with. And we can see the different task names, the start, end date, the duration, and who it's assigned to. And the neat part is, so all of these are tasks here. If I click into it, I can actually change the date, start date, end date, whatever I want, right in line here, which is kind of handy. And I can drag this to show one view versus the other more or click just the icon here and completely hide it and I can expand it again. So that's kind of a cool little set of features that's available. And I will just hide that for the time being and click on today. And we can see at the top level, this is the project and this is the span that we have had the project scheduled at. And then here's each task with the arrows pointing towards the next successor. So if I go into settings, we can see that this is based off of the dependency field within the other view that we set up originally. And then there's different settings here, depending on how you want to view your data. So there's the show dependency arrows, and you can see how they disappear or appear based off of what you click. Task labels. So if you want to see the task name right in line, we can turn that on. Highlight critical paths, show project start and end dates. So we can view it like this, column lines, and there's the show today line. If we want to see that red line here, so that's some of the settings. Then we have obviously our standard filter group spotlight types sort so on. So if we click filter, if we had multiple projects in here and I clicked filter, then I could filter it by each individual project so that things don't get messy. So there's a lot of flexibility to structuring your data similarly to how you view it in all the other view types. What I've done here is we've got the current website audit. So that's the first task which flows through. And here's the icon that shows the milestone. So if we go back to the grid view and where I have it marked as a milestone here, and I've just selected one day, you can see how it gets plotted on the Gantt chart as a milestone. We can also click into the record from here to be able to view all of the data related to that specific task. We can drag if we want to advance the start date, if we need to push it off by a week or so, we can drag it across and the rest of the tasks will push out accordingly. And that's because of the setting that I showed you earlier. If we go into the settings here and the auto scheduling, I have automatically scheduled tasks based on their dependencies. So because I've dragged this back, the rest of the tasks will move back in line with it based off of the number of days that we've assigned for the specific task. So to add a Gantt view, you'll just go over to the side here. We'll click create new view and select Gantt view, name it whatever you want and it will bring in the information accordingly. 
what I like to do. And what makes most sense usually is to group by the specific project. So we can set that up. And then from here, we can turn on our settings to show the data however we want. We could sort by dates. And if we don't sort by anything, we can actually drag and drop and reorder things accordingly. So if I wanted to put the current website audit on top, which makes most sense, follow the path all the way through to the end of the project, we can view it that way. That's how you create a Gantt view. It's very simple to do. And then you have your various options across the top here. I'm going to go back into the task project, show you what it looks like to add a new one, but we'll go to projects, add a new project. I will just call this example project market is in process and I am going to leave everything else blank. Go down here, click add task, and then we could just do task one, go across and schedule it if I want to. So I will pick the 26th to the 29th, hit done. And then I can assign it to that project I just created, which is example project. And then we can see here, we've got one task created now. And if I go back over to the Gantt view, we'll see that it gets dropped in here with task one. So this is where I had mentioned that to clean things up, if you don't want to view multiple projects across this view, that's where you go in, select filter. We can filter it by the project is exactly this example project and that way it will hide everything else and we can just view the example project here and then if we want we can build out the project from this level we'll just add task two and then the thing that you do want to make sure you do is assign it to the project that you're working on and i can click the due date and add the day so maybe this is a milestone and it will mark it as a milestone because it's only assigned across one day and then the other thing that you can do from here, if I go back to task by project, I can see that there's no predecessor or successor here. And that's because we have not assigned that yet. You could assign that from this field directly here. I could click into it and click there's a predecessor and it's task one. Or the other option, we can do it directly from the Gantt view. We can click the end here, just drag down to here, and it's now made this task to a successor to task one. It's just a high level of what the Gantt chart is capable of and how you can visualize your data and projects across a specific timeline. And then if we go into the projects table, I have a projects dashboard set up. This is also a really nice feature of Smart Suite. We can create dashboards to be able to view all our different types of data, the number of projects that are open, closed, new ones that have been started, project budget versus actual spend we view all this data and the nice thing is if i click into it i can open up the records that are actually being brought into those specific charts and graphs so you can get really creative here to be able to view your data at a high level for managers owners ceos whoever needs to visualize this data maybe not so much at the specific project level but at a high level it's a really nice and neat feature that is available within Smart Suite. And the last thing I wanted to touch on for this task and project management, if we create an automation, if for example, any project that we open up, we want to assign a specific set of tasks, we could do that with automations. Or if we want to notify specific users, whether it's the project manager, owner, or CEO of certain completion statuses, I will just show you this one really quick. If we go into automations, create my first automation, and then I can do when a record matches a condition. So at the task level, when the status is equal to complete, then we'll add an action. And it could be simply something as send a Slack message to a specific channel, send a Slack message to a specific person, or we can send an email to a specific person as well. And this could be CEO at example.com. And then we can go into the subject and bring in the project that that's related to and the task. And then we go is complete. And then we can provide any other additional information that's relevant within the message. We just turn that on. So then that way, anytime that a task is marked as complete project manager or whoever needs to find or see that information can get notified via Slack message or an email that that task has been completed. Again, 
you can get really creative and there's a lot of flexibility to create lots of different workflows and automations to streamline and automate many of your tasks. There's a lot of different ways to organize and structure your project management system within SmartSuite. And there's a lot of different features available to customize your solution in any way you need. But this is just a really high level to show you some of the feature sets that are highly requested across SmartSuite for project management purposes. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that subscribe button so you can get more tutorials in the future. Thank you.